The Mobite Stone, also known as the Misha Steel, is one of the most important archaeological discoveries in the mid-19th century. Currently located in the Louvre Museum, the stone is a victory proclamation of King Misha of Moab over the Israelites dating back to the 9th century BC. The significance of the stone lies in the details in the kings of Israel that are named that corroborates Old Testament history. Old Testament history from Genesis 12 through Malachi can be seen in four periods. First, the patriarchs from Abraham to Moses. Second are the judges that follow Joshua's conquest. Third is the kingdom period from Saul to Jerusalem's destruction by King Nebuchadnezzar. And the final period with Gentile rule under the Babylonians and Persians. All periods have direct connection with the reigning world power of its time. The Egyptians, followed by the Assyrians, the Babylonians, the Persians, then the Greek Empire that falls between the Old and New Testament time periods. The Moabite Stone is dated around 830 BC, placing itself right in the middle of the northern Israel's timeline from the dividing in 931 to its fall in 722 by the Assyrians. The stone recalls that for a period of time, Moab was paying tribute to northern Israel after which Misha revolted and claimed victory. This story is strikingly similar to the one found in 2 Kings 3, naming Misha firsthand. So here are seven reasons how the Moabite Stone supports Old Testament history. Number 1. Misha the Sheepmaster Other than accurately naming Misha as the king of Moab during this time period, the Bible also calls him a sheepmaster. This might sound insignificant at first, but as you notice in lines 30 and 31 of the stone that Misha gave himself praise for bringing the flocks to the land. These types of details let you know that the account found in the Bible was used from a first-hand source. Number 2. Location, Location, Location Something that is often overlooked or underappreciated is the geographical accuracy of the Bible. Critics will often call the Bible a book of myths, legends, or even fairy tales. The problem with that is that the Bible never speaks of events occurring in made-up places. They are not in Narnia or Middle Earth having battles of good and evil. Since the Bible lists these cities and areas with precision, it tells us that the events described were being recorded from a first-person perspective and not from a distant land many centuries later after the event had taken place. Another question to ask are what are the origins of these places? Moab's origins are recorded in Genesis 19 following the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah. As one recalls, Abram was accompanied by his nephew Lot until Lot chose to separate their flocks from one another and chose the eastern plain of Sodom to settle in. Following the destruction, Lot fled to the mountains with his two daughters fearing that they wouldn't find husbands, so they decided to get their father drunk and both have a child with him. This isn't a pleasing story to hear about, but what it does explain are the origins of the Moabites and the Ammonites in the early 19th century BC. Number 3. The Men of Gad Why this detail is important is that it gives us validation to there being 12 tribes in the land of Canaan. After Joshua's conquest, the land was divided up amongst the 12 tribes while the Levites served as priests to each tribe and oversaw the tabernacle. Once the tribes requested for a king, they were unified for a brief period of time with its division taking place in 931 after Solomon's death. The Misha steel was found in the Moabite capital of Dibon. You can see Israel at the time of King Misha was its northern border and the tribe of Gad were still living there. So the stone mentioning Gad gives validation to the history of the patriarchs and the 12 tribes. From line 10 on the stone, it explains that the men of Gad lived in the land of Adarot from ancient times. The phrase in Adarat from ancient times can be connected to Numbers chapter 32. Before the conquest, the tribes of Reuben and Gad requested to Moses to stay on the east side of the Jordan. And in verse 34 says, the children of Gad built Dibon and Adarat and Aor, which are the same on the stone. Number 4, the House of Omri. The House of Omri was the fourth dynasty to rule over northern Israel after the kingdom's division. The most famous of these kings is Ahab along with his wife Jezebel. The House of Omri ended in approximately 841 BC when Jehu wiped out the descendants of Omri. These events correspond perfectly with the date of the Moabite stone. Number 5. Moabite Gods The pagan god Ashtar is brought up early in Israel's history with the generation that came after Joshua's death. Judges 2.13 said that they forsook the Lord and served Baal and Ashtaroth. This makes sense that these gods were already present in the land with Moab beginning about 500 years earlier following the destruction of Sodom. The pagan god Chemosh is first brought up in Numbers 21-29, which matches the same time frame for the tribe of Gad selling just to the north. The most famous mentioning of Chemosh is with King Solomon building a high place for the foreign god to please one of his many wives. The mentioning of foreign gods in the Bible helps substantiate the biblical timeline as it matches the same archaeological period that they are found in. Number 6. The House of David 
This is the most famous part of the stone because with the rise of biblical criticism in the early 19th century, the idea of King David's existence was equated with that of King Arthur. The Bible says that David's house lasted till the Babylonian destruction of Jerusalem. But critics held that there was no proof that David existed outside of the Bible. So the idea of the kingdom was considered fictional as well. The significance of that claim is with its connection to Jesus, as he is described as a descendant of David in his genealogies. So by claiming David was mythical, they would say Jesus was as well. Today, most liberal scholars would say David existed, but nothing more than a tribal chieftain. There was no basis for this claim other than simply denying the apparent facts that the kingdom of Israel existed in its description in the Bible. Thing number seven, the vessels of Yahweh. The twofold importance of this phrase lies in the acknowledgement that Yahweh worship was already present in the land, but also the vessels that were connected to his worship. The name Yahweh is first used in Genesis 2-4 with the creation of Adam and Eve. The vessels come into play after the exodus with the building of the tabernacle. What makes this mentioning by King Misha so important is because often liberal scholars will promote the documentary hypothesis, also known as the JEDP hypothesis. The traditional view is that the Old Testament was written from the late 15th to the late 5th century BC, while the critical view says that Moses, Yahweh worship, the Torah were invented during the 6th to 5th century BC by Jewish priests to help encourage fellow Jews while in exile. Since the Moabite stone predates the critical view, this shows that the Torah was written centuries before exile took place. Overall, the Moabite stone adds validation to the biblical accounts are historical and not contrived myth. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the like button below to stay up to date with the new videos as they come out.